and the under square stroke ratio and the over straight stro over squares over square straight stroke ratio god damn it and Hi my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today we're talking about square engines if you've ever heard of one. So square engines uh, or over square and under square engines is all to do with stroke ratio. So the three main topics of this discussion are stroke ratios and the under square stroke ratio and the over straight stro over squares over square straight stroke ratio god damn it and a square engine. So a square engine, and it's the easiest way also to describe what a stroke ratio is, is the stroke and the piston diameter. So we have our little piston, we have our crankshaft, and our crank pin is here, and for it to go from there to there, that is the stroke, and our piston diameter, or our cylinder diameter is here, and that's our uh, cylinder ID. So it's the relationship between the two. So if this stroke here, just say, is 90 millimetres and the piston width is 90 millimetres, this is what we call a square engine. It is the ratio between the two. So we can knock them two off. So that's 9 and 9, and 9 goes into 9 once, so it's a 1 to 1 engine. That's basically it. There's nothing sexy about it. It's just the relationship between the stroke and the piston ball. If they are the same, then we call it a square engine. There is slight deviation, so if this is 90.1 and this is 90 bang on, we'll still call it a square engine. It's as close as damn it. Um, and under square and over square are deviations from these numbers, either making it top heavy or bottom heavy, and we'll go through them in a second. So this is an example of a over square engine and an under square engine. Over squares means that the piston is bigger than the crank, uh, bigger than the bigger than the crank. <laughs> the piston diameter is bigger than the stroke, and under square means that the piston diameter is smaller than the stroke. Um, modern four stroke engines, over time, just like, let's pick the Yamaha one as an example. They're becoming more and more over square as time goes on, and two strokes are more likely to be under square engines, generally due to the porting considerations and stuff. Um, so let's look at each one in turn and see what are the benefits and are the pros and cons. Let's put it that way: the pros and cons of each design and why each exists. So the benefits of having a over square engine, just say like the Yamaha R1 and other sports bikes like that, is that when you have your cylinder, which is an enclosed volume of fresh fuel and air mixture, um, when the ignition takes place, and it's an ignition, it's a burn, it's not an explosion, I wish people would stop fucking saying it, um, pressure is applied to the entire cylinder, so the same pressure is applied to the cylinder head, the same pressure is applied to the cylinder walls, and the pressure is applied to the piston. Thank God for that, otherwise nothing would happen. Now, the area of this entire cylinder, especially initially when the piston's at top dead centre or near enough, is you have, that's the area of your cylinder head, then you have the area of your piston, and then you have this thin slither that's the piston wall all the way wrapped around, which is the same as the circumference of these circles. If you have a under square engine, then you have a smaller piston, a smaller head, and a strip that works all the way around the circumference, which is your cylinder wall. And as you can see, the bigger you make the piston, the bigger this surface area is to uh, apply pressure to. So the piston can absorb more of the pressure energy that's in the combustion into the actual piston, transfer this through the conrod to the actual crank. The bad of all this is that the piston is obviously a lot bigger, which means the piston's a lot heavier. 
which is obviously detrimental because it's a reciprocating mass. The other thing is, and this is one of the main reasons why they do this, is if you reduce the size of your crank, your stroke from here to here, if you reduce that, then obviously to maintain the same cc you have to increase the size of your pistons. The reason why they want to reduce the size of the crank is, is if your pin was here in a bigger crank, this is a longer distance to go all the way around once than this is to go around once. Which means that the RPM of an engine with a similar size cc with a smaller crank can rotate faster, you get higher RPM. If you have a bigger crank, you have slower RPM. However, again, there's a compromise with that. Torque, as we've talked about before, is all about the force, the newtons, which is what happens up here, and the meters, the, the leverage. If you have a bigger crank, you're going to have higher torque values because your force would be, let's just say, is the same, but your lever is a bigger lever. If you have a smaller crank, then your meter section here is smaller, which means you'll have a lower number, a lower torque. So it's a trade-off between the two. You can have a small crank and go faster, but lower torque, or you can have a bigger crank that can go that goes slower, but you have more torque. So it's a swap between the two. And seeing as though it's torque and um, RPM, the speed at which you go around, that equals power, they're pretty much interchangeable between the two. It's like exchanging volts for amps kind of thing, if you want to think about the exchange of one for the other. Um, so that's the benefits and the drawbacks of a over-square engine. You have a bigger piston, it's heavier, which is a bad thing, but you have a larger ratio of surface area from the piston to the rest of the cylinder, um, which means that more of the um, energy that you release from burning fuel is applied straight to the piston but on the other side of that, the flip side of the coin you lose torque but you can rev the engine higher. For an undersquare engine it's exactly the opposite whereas your cylinder has less surface area to apply the pressure to or the, more importantly the ratio between how much of this interior volume or how much of in this interior space, how much of the surface area is piston, which is lower with an um, undersquare engine. But on the other side of it, you have a bigger stroke, which means that you could, the, the newtons, the force that you do produce, has a bigger lever to convert and make higher torque levels. So because two strokes have uh, small and light pistons, the reciprocating mass is lower, which means that the uh, RPM does increase in that sense because there's not as much mass to shift. Um, because of the porting, because you've got porting here and here and here, you need ways to close that off so a taller, smaller piston is more called for. The bigger crank, yes it weighs more, but it also, hurt, it also holds more energy, it stores more energy as a flywheel um, in inertia. So you've got that case as well, so that kind of helps you, yes, and because it's a small piston, it's easier to chuck around. So because two strokes don't have the limitation of valves, and all the um, masses that, all the mass losses that have to go into the valve train, and all the friction losses of the valve train, and so on and so forth, and because it is one bang every other stroke, two strokes can take advantage of the under square system. They've got a light top end, the crankshaft holds inertia, they can produce torque, which is what they are lacking um, in a two-stroke. So the two-strokes tend to be more under-square than the four-strokes, which are going more for the over-square.